Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Hello, wildlings. I think you'll like our scary selection for this evening. Straight from Reddit's No Sleep pages. It's got all the ingredients. Cursed lake, serial killer, forested camp, and horny teenagers. The only thing it's missing is the hockey mask. Our precarious presentation, The Drowning Man by Mr. Outlaw. This is something that happened to me last summer. I'm opting to tell it now, because, well, we're cooped up indoors and I suppose there's no better time. Also, perhaps finally telling it will be somehow cathartic, but I doubt that. To this day, I can't find an explanation for what happened. In fact, I can't even fathom there being an explanation that I'll ever understand. I was camping with a few friends. We weren't terribly deep in the woods or anything. In fact, there was another campsite set up maybe two or three hundred meters away from us. For the first few days, calling it a great time would have been an understatement. We were having a fucking blast. Exams were finally over. We were blowing off steam any way we could. There were five of us in total. Uh, Neil, James, Curtis, Ahmad, and Steve, me. Yeah, real sausage fest, I know. There was a lake within walking distance of our campsite, and I found myself sitting on the shore during the third night. Curtis and I were smoking and talking about our final year at uni and the future ahead of us. It had been quite the tumultuous year, after all. Now, after a while, Curtis left to hit on the girls at the campsite near us. I stayed after for a bit, listening to music, looking up at the stars, and at some point, I noticed water rippling onto the shore. I froze a moment, I couldn't imagine someone actually being out on the lake, so I took my headphones out, and I heard the splashing of water. It sounded frenetic, almost like somebody was drowning. I sat up and looked, shocked at the sight ahead of me. Sure enough, there was somebody out there, maybe 50 meters away from the shore, seemingly struggling to stay afloat. It looked like an adult man, but I couldn't tell from so far, but it certainly wasn't a child. What the hell, I thought. Of course, the first conclusion that I came to was that my friends were playing a trick on me. It was definitely something that they'd do, after all. Fucked up, I know. I mean, it was nearly midnight, and who the hell else could it be? Oh, come on, I yelled out. You think I'd fall for that? The figure just kept flailing around. Soon enough, I started to get worried. At that point, it was either save my pride or let somebody drown to death. It, if it was one of my friends, then I'd just have to get back at them later. Hang on, I yelled out before jumping in. Now, I wasn't the best swimmer, but I was certainly competent enough. I was confident that I'd be able to tug this guy back to shore. Nevertheless, my lack of goggles, combined with the fact that it was nearly pitch black outside, did make things a bit harder. Eventually, I stopped in order to make sure that I was moving in the right direction. However, it was gone. There was no more splashing. I panicked for a moment, thinking that I had acted too late, but then I realized something even more horrifying. I was able to stand. The water went up to my chest, and I was only about 5'6", or 167 centimeters tall. I looked back at the shore, and I realized that I was just about 50 meters out. What the hell, I thought to myself. A chill ran up the back of my spine as the implication set in. It was a different kind of fear than what I was used to, more abstract. Something that I was completely unfamiliar with. I stood still there for a moment, 
For some reason, I was hoping that my mind had somehow conjured up the whole thing, that I'd been seeing things, a visceral hallucination. Or maybe I was just too scared to move. Maybe they were waiting for me to swim away, and they'd grab onto my ankle with their clammy hands as soon as I tried. I'm not sure how long I waited. It was probably under a minute, even though it felt like far longer. I didn't even know what I was waiting for, but then it happened. A splash from behind me. I had never swum faster in my life. As I got within 10 meters of the shore, that thing finally caught up. Its hands were cold and scaly as they wrapped around my foot. I began thrashing wildly, eventually managing to kick it off in desperation. During the struggle, I caught a glimpse of it. The pale moonlight could only illuminate so much, but its features were still something that could hardly be forgotten. Gray, scaly skin, seaweed-like hair, empty eye sockets, and an empty, gaping mouth curled into a wide, sadistic grin. It seemed to be laughing under the water, but no air bubbles were rising up. It took all of my mental strength not to faint on the spot. At that point, the water was only waist deep, so I started running, and thankfully, I got away. I stumbled onto shore, just about ready to pass out from exhaustion, and stared back at the lake, praying that it wouldn't walk out after me. I watched as the ripples in the water began to recede, fading before disappearing altogether. The lake surface was smooth once again calm, as if nothing had happened at all. For a few moments after, I was inclined to believe it, that the whole thing was just a horrifying hallucination. But I couldn't hold on to that delusion forever. My foot had been cut from where it had grabbed me, and there was no escaping that reality. I walked back to the campsite and slept in the truck that night, firmly clutching the shotgun that we'd brought. I didn't tell any of my friends about it. However, I made damn sure that we steered clear from that lake. I told them that I'd found some used needles and condoms near the shore. That did the trick. I decided to walk into town the following afternoon just to get further away from the lake for a bit. I entered a small shop to get an energy drink since I hadn't gotten a wink of sleep the previous night. I suppose the cashier, an older man appearing to be in his 60s, could sense something in my expression. You look like you've just seen the devil, son. You got a story for me? He asked. I chuckled nervously and shook my head. No, it's nothing, just a bad dream, I guess. The man was clearly seeing through my lies. He grinned before continuing. I've been around for longer than you've been alive. It's never just a nightmare. You saw something, didn't you? Come on, I'll believe you. I exhaled before telling him what I'd seen. He listened and nodded, a grave expression on his face while doing so. Hang on, let me make a call. He went on to tell me about a serial killer that had been known to lure his victims into the lake by pretending to drown, only to drown them himself once they got close. Apparently, he'd been inactive for some time, but my story seemed to make him think that that fact had changed. The police should be around to scan the area soon. You want to stick around for a bit? They might want to talk to you about it. Text whoever you're with in the meantime. Just warn him, okay? I just nodded. I didn't say anything, but that explanation didn't seem quite right to me. A serial killer. It sure as hell didn't seem like a regular man to me. I, I tried rationalizing it, though. Perhaps everything that had happened was real, and I had interpreted it the wrong way. Maybe it truly was just some psycho in that lake, and his strange appearance was a product of my frenetic mind. That was the explanation that I decided to settle on at the time. The cops came, and I talked to them describing exactly what I had seen, barring the more otherworldly details. They thanked me and began patrolling the area. To my surprise, it 
only took a few hours for them to catch somebody. James Rolison, the notorious serial killer known for drowning people that the cashier had described to me. He had been positively linked to at least three deaths in the surrounding towns and had apparently come back for more. The officers asked me if I recognized him as the man that had tried to pull me into the lake. But as much as I wanted that to be the case, it wasn't. I couldn't recognize him. The only thing that I could remember were those empty eyes and that scaly skin. I was silent for a while before an officer chimed in on my behalf. You don't have to answer, kid. This scumbag can't hurt you anymore. I don't know if I imagine what happened next or what, but I could swear that right before James was dragged into the cop car, he grinned at me something sinister. A grin that I nearly recognized as the one that had been leering at me from beneath the water. But it disappeared from his face just about as quickly as it had appeared. I shivered and made my way back to the campsite. The cops said that they'd stay nearby just in case anything else came up, which did allow me to relax somewhat, but only a bit. At that point, I was just counting down the minutes until we were supposed to leave the next morning. Our last night would have been fun, I suppose. Curtis had managed to convince the girls at the other campsite to come and hang out with us. They were cute as well. Still, I couldn't really enjoy any of it. I couldn't stop thinking about that person. But he was gone, right? There shouldn't have been a reason to worry so much. But no, I couldn't stop. Man, you're looking down, Curtis said, grinning at me. Still thinking about Angela? Angela was my ex, and no, I wasn't thinking about her for obvious reasons. I know what'll cheer you up, he continued. Ladies, what do you say we take a dip in the lake? They all cheered the idea on. I could feel my stomach start to sink. Dude, I told you that lake is dirty as fuck. What if we step on a needle or something? Oh, come on, dude. We have sandals for a reason. Before I could get another word out, he'd taken off, along with everybody else. Come on, man, he yelled back at me. I hate seeing you like this. I took a deep breath before pulling myself up. Nothing to worry about, I thought. Nothing to worry about. I didn't even believe what I was telling myself. Regardless, I caught up to the group and found myself standing back in front of the lake. Even though everyone was having a blast, I still couldn't. I just kept scanning the water. I was looking for any signs of it, him, whatever the hell had grabbed me that night. Hey, one of the girls nudged me. You drink too much or something? If you need somebody to hold your hair back while you puke, I'm your girl. I laughed. I'm fine, but I'll keep that in mind. As the night went on, I began loosening up. Midnight passed and nothing had happened. Everything seemed fine. I was even starting to enjoy myself. But then it happened again. Hey, what's going on over there? Ahmad yelled out. I followed his gaze with my own. Oh no, I muttered. Somebody was drowning about 50 meters away from us. Jesus, Curtis said. Don't worry about it, I'll go get him. No. Curtis, don't! Dude, I'll be fine. Don't worry about it, he replied. The water, it's, it's shallow. That person's not in trouble. Jesus, man. Do you hear yourself? I'm not going to let him drown. I'm not going to let him die, all right? I couldn't do anything else before he swam off. I tried to go after him, but he was far faster than me. Just like before, the drowning man disappeared as soon as Curtis reached him. He stopped swimming and stood confused. What the hell? He said. Where did they go? Curtis! I was basically shrieking at this point. Get away from there! I blinked. 
once, and he was abruptly dragged into the water. What happened next was too blurry for me to recall exactly. I remember diving after him only to find no traces of anybody or anything. The cops came at one point due to how much I was yelling and screaming. We searched for him for hours, scouring the lake as thoroughly as possible. It wasn't even that big. If he was there, he should have turned up. The cops had a hard time coming up with an explanation, of course. They settled on drowning as the cause for the time being, not that that made any fucking sense. Curtis knew how to swim. The deepest part of that lake was only 177 centimeters. He was 186 centimeters tall. As for James, well, he hadn't escaped. He was still in custody when it happened. I can't explain what transpired that night. It might be something beyond understanding at all. I can't believe that I lost a friend that night. I drove back out to that lake a few nights ago. The entire place was empty. I'm not sure what I was trying to do, what I was trying to learn, if anything at all. I stared out at the water for hours, well past midnight. The drowning man didn't make another appearance. However, something did wash up on shore. It was almost like a taunt. It was a sandal, the same one that Curtis had been wearing that night. Bad enough when something lethal is after you. It's worse when it enjoys its work. Worse still, if you run after it alone. Stay scary, my wildlings. Don't forget your battle buddy. And make the most of your nights. <laughs>